Hey, hi everybody. My name is Julian. I'm a tech evangelist with AWS and uh, I focus on AI and machine learning. And I guess you just had a busy day of sessions covering all sorts of topics. And now it's my job to close the day. And I figured, well, probably you would be tired of slides and, 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 and uh, PowerPoint and so on. So I decided to do something a little different. So uh, we're gonna do a whiteboard session. And uh, well, I'm gonna talk about machine learning uh, as, you, as you would expect, but I'm gonna try and take a, a slightly different angle on, uh, on machine learning. So let me explain. Um, a, a lot of people, when they talk about machine learning, they focus about algorithms, they focus about theory, uh, they focus on, on the, the, I would say the technical part of machine learning. And I, I, of course it is important, but sometimes I feel uh, we should take a few steps back and look at the bigger picture. Uh, where does the data come from? What do we need to do on the data to, uh, be, before it can actually be used to train machine learning models? And what happens next? What happens after the model has been trained? So this is what we're gonna talk about for the next 30 minutes. So you may have seen uh, this uh, reInvent talk. It's been quite popular over the last few years. Uh, it's called uh, Big Data, uh, architectural patterns, uh, and uh, the, um, you can find this video and this session on YouTube. Um, the, the number you, the session number you need to look at is uh, ABD 201. Okay, uh, and the reason why I'm referencing this one is because uh, I'm going to basically start from there. Uh, I'm going to start from this session, of course, with a focus on machine learning. So let's let's get started. Um, in this session, and generally when you work with data, you need to go through different steps, okay? The first step is obviously to collect the data, ingest it, okay? The second step, let me do it like this to have some extra space. The second step is of course to store the data, okay? And then the fun starts. Okay, then we start processing the data and transforming it. And finally, we move to uh, consuming the data. So if you looked at this from a strictly from a big data perspective, you could say, okay, I've got some web logs and I'm collecting them through uh, uh, on my web servers and you know, copying the files to S3 and then storing everything there and then running maybe Hadoop jobs or running Redshift or running um, um, uh, Athena on those logs, extracting some information that gets pushed somewhere else for consumption. Okay, so now let, let's use this same pipeline, so to speak, um, but with a focus on machine learning, okay? Let's look at all those four steps and see what's available on AWS uh, to help you get from A to Z, okay? And uh, well, there's quite a lot of stuff to talk about, as you will see. So, it's collection first. Um, I guess data scientists would say, hey, <laughs> you know, I don't care so much for that. Uh, it's not my job to collect the data. The data should be collected by someone else. So, put the data somewhere, I can work uh, and then, then I can work with it. But actually collecting the data is important. So let's look at some typical scenarios. Um, of course, files are gonna be important. Okay, web logs, uh, CSV files, JSON files, um, and, and you can just grab them from wherever they are, okay? Um, web servers and uh, storage systems, etc. cetera, in, in your company or on the internet, just grab them um, using, you know, copying files any, any way you want to. Okay, so files are obviously will be, uh, will be in the picture. Um, streams are increasingly important, right? Uh, streaming, capturing streaming data. It could be, uh, it could be application data being streamed from a mobile app. It could be, uh, it could be all sorts of things. It could be I uh, data coming from IoT um, systems, IoT devices that you capture 24-7. Uh, 
And obviously here, no surprise, um, Kinesis is going to be your friend, right? Uh, Amazon Kinesis, hopefully you're familiar with it. Maybe there was a talk on Kinesis. I'm, I would be surprised if it uh, hadn't been mentioned today. Uh, so Kinesis is our scalable um, messaging system. Uh, you can just push messages to streams. You can scale very easily uh, Kinesis to, uh, to accommodate for uh, uh, really uh, uh, very, very large uh, volumes of data. And um, when it comes, so it could be just, let's say, IoT messages that you're pushing in there. But um, there are a few extra things to know for machine learning. Uh, first, you may be aware of Kinesis video streams that was uh, announced at reInvent uh, last year. Okay, so Kinesis video streams, uh, which is a very easy way to stream video data into AWS to be processed maybe later on by recognition in the uh, consume phase, but we'll, we'll get to that. So if you have video content, uh, video streams, it's, pretty, uh, uh, it's a pretty easy way to do it. Um, but you could just also use maybe Kinesis Firehose, which is again a very, uh, uh, a very easy way to, uh, to move data um, into, uh, into S3 or into Redshift, for example. And there's a cool, a cool feature here uh, that I want to highlight, and I'll put that in red because it's important, is that you could use, you could use Lambda here. Um, you can run Lambda function, a Lambda function on the messages that are in transit in Firehose. So how does that relate to machine learning? Well, maybe you could be cleaning data uh, at the uh, collection stage, okay? Maybe you could be looking for missing values, um, um, just uh, weird values. Maybe you could be already performing some cleanup and validation on your data before it even gets to storage, okay? So I think that's a, that's a pretty, uh, that's a pretty uh, interesting way to do it, okay? Uh, so files and streams is probably uh, what, you would be, uh, what you would be dealing with. Uh, and obviously, when it comes to uh, when it comes to data, of course you will have all kinds of backends. Okay, and they could be uh, they could be SQL, they could be uh, uh, they could be uh, NoSQL. And chances are you need to pull some data from those backends uh, to build your your data set or refresh your data set. Um, so again, and there are many ways to do this. Um, maybe I guess you could even use a, a, a data pipeline to go and grab uh, stuff from those backends. Uh, you could use a tool like Scoop, okay, which is a popular way, an open source tool, a popular way to grab uh, data from uh, maybe your SQL databases and just uh, and just dump that data somewhere. And uh, I. I um, interestingly enough, I, I see some customers who are using uh, DMS, uh, the database, our database migration service, uh, to uh, pull data from SQL databases into S3. Okay, because we will be talking about Amazon SageMaker in a in a moment, and as you probably know, SageMaker needs all data to be in S3. So uh, there's a bit of work involved in pooling. Um, that kind of data into S3. So, of course, you could use your own tools and uh, build your own solution. But I I've met customers who are using uh, DMS to do this. And DMS is a, is a, a service that lets you migrate your databases uh, into AWS uh, or outside of AWS, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But one of the targets for DMS is actually S3. And so it's a cool way and an easy way uh, and a managed way, <laughs> a fully managed way to migrate your data to S3. So, uh, give it a try. Uh, people seem to uh, people seem to like it. Uh, so okay, probably uh, we could think of other scenarios, but I would say it's quite likely your data will either come from files that you can just dump into S3 directly, um, streams, uh, and I would say Firehose and maybe Lambda are your friends here. If you have video streams, then use Kinesis video streams directly, and if you have backends, any. Uh, uh, in-house solution to pull the data will work, but again, DMS, why not, okay? 
All right, so that's the collection, the collection stage. Now let's move on to storage. Well, this one is actually easy. <laughs> this one's actually easy because uh, when you talk about uh, when you talk about storage um, for machine learning on, on AWS, uh, pretty much it's going to mean S3, right? Um, it's going to mean S3 because if you work uh, with um, the high-level services like uh, recognition uh, or, uh, or other services, um, of course, you can pass your, your image, let's say, to the API call. You can inline it, or it could be in S3. Okay? So S3 is the location where the data uh, could, be, could, be, uh, could be used from. Um, and if you work with SageMaker, uh, we'll get there, then all data needs to be in S3, okay? So uh, it's a pretty simple discussion, right? It's, uh, you need ways to uh, 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 funnel all of that stuff into S3, okay? But here, Firehose does that, DMS does that, files, obviously, it's, uh, it's easy to copy files to S3, etc., etc. So look no further than S3. Uh, your, that's where your data needs to be, okay? Um, and I don't want to go into the data lake discussion, uh, not today, but this is pretty much what you should be looking for. Uh, some kind of central repository where uh, your raw data gets uh, dumped, okay? And then you can get to work, okay? And again, uh, you, could use, uh, you, you could use some Lambda here as well, uh, because as you know, it's very easy to trigger a Lambda function every time uh, a new object gets written to S3. And again, this could be used for cleaning, uh, um, maybe aggregating, any kind of pre-processing that you would want to do automatically when the data gets to the storage system would be easy to perform with, uh, with Lambda. Okay, just, just a different way uh, to, uh, uh, don't delay those cleanup decisions and transformation decisions uh, to the ETL stage. There is uh, probably quite a bit you can do already uh, when the data is in flight or when the data gets written to, uh, to Amazon S3, okay? So the storage step is kind of easy. Now let's get to uh, the important part, the process part, okay? And we should really rename this. Uh, yeah, we're gonna subtitle it. <laughs> We're gonna subtitle it train or transform maybe. Yeah, transform, train, and optimize. Okay, so it's really three things we're doing here. Compared to just, let's say, uh, running a query in Redshift or running a query in Athena here, we need to do more uh, with that data. So let's look at those different, uh, those different stages. Uh, so, tr transform, what, what do we mean here? Well, as you probably know, um, the, one of the difficult things in machine learning is to build features from the raw data, okay? Most of the time, you won't be working with the raw data that you uh, uh, collected and stored. You need to transform that data into a number of features that are interesting to build a machine learning model. So, it sounds complicated, but let me give you an example if you're not familiar with machine learning. Let's say in this, in this data set here, uh, you have different columns for, for uh, customer addresses. Okay, so not a really good design maybe, but let's say you have a column with the street number, let's say you have a, a column with the street name, and you have a column with the, the zip code, all right? Uh, you could say, well, the zip code, it's interesting because I know the general area where the customer lives, but if you want, let's say, fine-grained prediction, let's say you want to do street-level prediction uh, for, for your customers, um, well, the zip code in itself is not really helping. So you need to create a higher-level feature where you would uh, concatenate uh, the street number and the zip code, and maybe even the street number, why not? Okay, so you would transform uh, using a very simple recipe, you would transform those three columns into a new column with a full address. And even better, uh, you could do, uh, you could transform this address into uh, um, um, 
uh, GPS coordinates to know exactly uh, where, the, where that house is or where that building is, okay? So you could map uh, the full address to uh, uh, lat uh, latitude and longitude, and these will be the features that you use in your machine learning model, okay? Just a simple example. Uh, of course, feature there's much, much more to feature engineering than this, but this is a simple example to, to help you understand that sometimes the data you, you have in the storage system is not uh, actually helping you directly build a model, okay? Uh, so transforming, performing feature engineering is, is quite important. So how do you do that? How do you, uh, how do you actually transform? And of course, there would be a bit of iterating here, right? Transforming the data, writing it back to the storage system, and, and maybe performing another round of transformation, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, uh, so here you would you 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 could be back into uh, into machine into big data world, uh, and uh, uh, you could use uh, why not you could use EMR uh, and Spark. I kind of like Spark, so of course I have to mention it uh, to perform um, ETL uh, those ETL operations at scale. Okay, it's it's a good first step. Uh, to prepare for, for the data, to prepare the data for training. Uh, you could use, uh, of course, you could use Redshift if you wanted to. Uh, you, could use, uh, you could use Athena, why not? Okay, so all those uh, uh, popular uh, big data, quote unquote, tools will help you prepare the data for training, okay? And of course, I should not forget Glue, okay? Uh, um, our, uh, ETL service that is uh, that is letting you uh, build a data catalog, so you can pull data from all kind of places uh, in your AWS account, uh, and then you can select uh, tables and you can transform them. And uh, you know, if you if you want to keep it simple with a managed service, Glue is is very very good. Okay, so that's I would say the, the these are the tools you would use for transformation. Uh, now, if you need to experiment with data, if you want to do this interactively, right? Uh, because you're just discovering what this data is all about, then of course, of course, you could always use an EC2 instance and install your uh, install your favorite tool and explore the data. Okay, but I would recommend using a notebook instance in Amazon SageMaker. So a notebook instance is uh, is a uh, uh, an EC2 instance that comes pre-installed with uh, Jupyter and notebooks and, and all the tools that you need, all the favorite uh, machine learning and deep learning libraries like TensorFlow and Scikit-learn, et cetera, et cetera. And they're all in there and you can just, uh, you can just get to work in minutes. Okay, so um, if you really enjoy installing all those packages on an EC2 instance, <laughs> help yourself. Uh, but I'm, a, I'm lazy and uh, I enjoy the, the comfort of notebook instances for exploration and, um, and just trying to understand what's, what's in my data and, and performing some uh, early, uh, early work before I get to training. Okay, so this is what you would have for transformation, okay? Now let's talk about training. So let's talk about not training first, okay? Because in the consume phase here, uh, we could be using uh, the high-level services, right? The uh, application services like recognition, poly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And those do not require any training from from you. They just require that you pass some data, and 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 you can use those services directly. Okay, so please do not. Uh, uh, do not ignore the fact that these are super easy to use. Uh, anyone can use them in a couple of lines of code. So if the only thing you need to do is image analysis or, or text-to-speech, just bring your data and use the application services directly. Okay? No training required. No, uh, no machine learning experience required, actually. But of course, when you have a proper data set, um, you want to train a model with that. You want to control the parameters, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and yes, here, SageMaker is the service that you should look at, okay? So SageMaker was released at reInvent 
2017, uh, so less than a year ago. Uh, it, it is very popular. It's being used by all kinds of companies uh, like Hotels.com and uh, Edmunds.com and um, uh, Tinder that, of course, no one uses here. Uh, and and some, uh, some bigger companies like Dow Jones, uh, GE, etc., etc. So for uh, heavy web <laughs> users and, uh, and large enterprise uh, users, uh, this, this works pretty well. You'll find lots. I'll give you some references at the end, but you can read all about it. Let's focus on, on the tech stuff for now. So for SageMaker, uh, you can train at any scale uh, using data hosted in S3. Uh, and I really mean any scale, and the, 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 the cherry on top is really you do not manage a single server. SageMaker will fire up the training infrastructure um, and, and manage it completely and then shut it down automatically once training is, uh, is over. So you never overpay for training. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about this. So here, the first thing you need to, uh, to do is select an algo obviously. When it comes to SageMaker, uh, we have built-ins, okay? I think we have 14 or 15 algos um, implemented by Amazon and AWS, things like uh, linear regression and uh, clustering with k-means and anomaly detection and uh, etc, etc. Uh, you can read all about it. They're off the shelf, just grab the algo, set some parameters, train. Uh, you could use um, um, deep learning environments that we uh, built already. So TensorFlow, MXNet, PyTorch, and Chainer. So we have built-in environments for those. So you just bring your, let's say, your TensorFlow script or your PyTorch script, run it directly inside of those environments. And they are Docker containers, as you probably know. So bring your own code, no need to install anything. And the, the third way would be just custom environments. So bring, let's say you want to use your uh, super secret C++ library for uh, machine learning uh, to train at scale on SageMaker. Uh, you could just uh, package it inside a Docker container, uh, push that container to AWS and, and ask SageMaker to use that container instead of the ones that we provide. And that works well. So you can literally run any machine learning workload on, uh, on SageMaker, okay? So built-in algos, deep learning environments, or anything, anything you like. The second thing is obviously infrastructure when you train, okay? And well, the two families of instances, uh, there are plenty of uh, instance type you can use on SageMaker, but the ones that I would really recommend are C5, P3, okay? So um, if you're familiar with Amazon instances, you know the first letter is, gives you the family. So C is compute, P is GPU, and the number is just the generation. So C5 is the latest generation. Uh, it, it supports the Intel uh, Skylake architecture. And uh, this architecture is, uh, is very fast for, uh, for machine learning because it, it, it includes an instruction set called AVX512 bizarre name. All you need to know is these are 512-bit uh, arithmetic instructions, okay? And when you do machine learning and deep learning, you, you, you spend all your time uh, adding and multiplying matrices and, and running all kinds of, uh, of math. And so the, the ability to do this 512-bit at a time is obviously uh, a big speed up. And uh, uh, we find that Skylake out of the box is twice faster than C4 for typical machine learning tasks. Okay, so if you, if you, uh, if you want uh, uh, computing power, um, C5 is a, is a good way. So you could, you could train definitely with C5 uh, for, I would say, a, a small and, and medium-sized data set. Um, uh, and um, actually, we have a, a, a customer called Peak. Oh, yeah. Let me write that here. It's a, it's a very cool story, peak.ai. And uh, they're, they're building and deploying large machine learning models for their customers, okay? And uh, such as uh, foot aside, 
Is that the, the right name? Yeah, sorry, some cheat sheets over there. <laughs> Food Asylum. Uh, they're selling, you know, uh, 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 sporting equipment and uh, sports uh, apparel, etc. Okay, so it's it's a retailer, and PKI built. Uh, ingested all the data, all the customer data uh, from Foot Asylum, built different machine learning models, uh, trained them on C5 with SageMaker, and the result when they deployed the, the machine learning models is, believe it or not, 28% increase on sales. Okay, so machine learning works. <laughs> right? you, can, you can make money with machine learning. It's not just a trend. Okay, and all of this using C5, right? So C5 for training really works, and of course C5 for prediction is very efficient as well. Okay, uh, yeah. inference on C5 is uh, as, as a really good um, uh, cost performance ratio. So sometimes when you work with really heavy data sets, uh, huge data sets for image and video uh, or speech, etc., well, you need to uh, go to the P3 family. And the P3 family, like I said, is a GPU family. Um, it's using the NVIDIA V100 GPU. That's the more, most powerful available today. And you can get from one to eight of those chips in a single P3 instance. And of course, you could always use multiple P3 instances if you really, really have um, a very large job on your hands, okay? Um, so these will uh, rule for uh, training on huge data sets. Uh, they're obviously a little more expensive, so you need to uh, uh, make sure that's exactly what you need. Um, but remember that with SageMaker, training is, is uh, stopped automatically at the end. So you never overpay for training. You never leave your training cluster running for nothing. Okay, so C5, P3, it's probably what you need to look at. But of course, there are plenty more instances that SageMaker supports, okay? All right, that's it for training. So once you're trained, you have a model, but is that the right model? Maybe not. Is it the best model? You never know. Um, and maybe you want to optimize, right? So maybe you want to train and optimize and, and the, the hyperparameters for the job until you get the highest accuracy. And typically, this has been a, a, difficult, uh, uh, a difficult task for machine learning engineers. Um, how do you select the best parameters for the training job? So you can do it manually and try your luck. Uh, you can try uh, random searches, train at random a number of times and pick the best. You can do grid searches, so systematically explore the hyperparameter space hoping to converge on the right spot. Or you could use hyperparameter optimization, which is what uh, SageMaker does, and automatically um, you apply machine learning optimization to figure out what the parameters should be. Okay, so I'm not gonna say too much about this because it's insanely complicated, and I wanna keep this session short, but uh, look at uh, the uh, HPO documentation for SageMaker. It uses a technique called Bayesian optimization. And it runs a small number of jobs to figure out what the right parameters should be. Okay? And so this lets you converge quicker to the right model. Okay? And then, of course, once you're happy with the model, I guess there's an extra step. Uh, and we'll use it here, which is deploy the model, okay, if, and, um, and, uh, and, and hit it with your data, okay? So let's talk, this is the, I'd say, the simple part. Let's look at the options here. So if you use SageMaker, okay, so SageMaker, uh, you could deploy to an HTTPS endpoint, okay, which is backed by a fleet of web servers automatically created and managed by SageMaker, and you get, you get CloudWatch monitoring, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you could do, if you don't want to predict your data with a, 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 an actual endpoint, you could do batch transform, okay? So instead, you, you don't deploy, you just take your batch data and, and run it through the model, okay? Called batch transform, okay? Uh, or uh, you could do it Custom, once again, 
you could grab the model that you train in S3 and, uh, and put it in your own web app and, uh, and just uh, maybe on your on-premise server or, in your, or your own laptop and just use it directly, okay? And like I said, of course, you could always use the application services if your data is uh, general purpose enough um, not to require a model trained by SageMaker, etc. If you want to use uh, recognition for images, or if you want to use poly for um, uh, text-to-speech, or if you want to use uh, translate or transcribe, etc., etc. Right? You know those uh, services, right? They've been uh, presented today. Then you can just very, very easily consume uh, your your data either by passing the data to the APIs or by uh, reading the data from S3, okay? So that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to, uh, to, um, to show you today. Um, there, of course, machine learning is about algos, optimizing hyperparameters, etc., right? Uh, but that's just a tiny part of the, of the whole, uh, of the whole uh, picture. Okay, how, how do you collect the data? Where does it come from? Where do you store it? Okay, uh, how do you transform it? Uh, how, how do you run feature engineering? How do you do ETL? Uh, then of course, how do you train? How do you optimize? And how do you deploy? Okay, and, uh, and you know, these two steps are not so easy to do manually, right? So it's good that SageMaker helps you with that. So, this is machine learning, and we could talk about more things like, like how do you retrain automatically, uh, and so on and so on. So there are plenty of, uh, like I say, ML ops uh, related to, uh, to these uh, workflows. But again, I want to keep this session short. You've had a long day, and uh, I hope this was, uh, this was a good overview of, of what it means to do machine learning on AWS. So uh, just before I go, um, let me... Uh, clean this up a bit. Uh, I want to remind you that Q&A uh, will run for 30 more minutes. So you can go to the Ask the Expert section and ask questions about, I guess, anything you uh, uh, listen uh, to today. So we're more than happy to uh, help you out. And well, obviously, uh, we have uh, our uh, reInvent conference at the end of uh, November in Vegas. And I will be there again. And I'm, I'm running some sessions there. And uh, well, if you can convince your boss to uh, send you to reInvent, we'd be more than happy to, uh, to meet there and, uh, and help you learn even, even more stuff, okay? Uh, when it comes to learning more about all of this, uh, of course, you can go to the AWS website, but when it comes to machine learning, there's really one place to go, ml.aws, right? That's a cool URL and you'll find information on uh, SageMaker and all the services that I mentioned, all right? And the last thing I wanna say before I go, if you wanna stay in touch, uh, the easiest way is to connect, of course, on LinkedIn or on Twitter. Uh, you can find me at uh, this handle on Twitter and uh, happy to share more content and answer your question there. Thank you very much for participating uh, in this uh, online conference today. I hope you learned lots of stuff. It was a pleasure to talk to you today. And I hope to see you, maybe at reInvent on the road or somewhere else. Have a great day. Bye-bye.